Welcome back to another video guys. In this video, I'm going to tell you 10 things that I hate about my Forester XT. This one may be the most obvious of all the things, but the number one thing that I hate about this car, probably the main reason why I don't drive it a lot, is the MPG. The MPG in this car is, is just atrocious. I usually get around 14, maybe 18 on the highway, but of course, with modifications on this car, as most people do, it gets worse and worse and worse. So, this is not something, I mean, I would love to daily drive it. It's very comfortable. You can watch my 10 things that I love about my Forester. I love driving it, but that MPG is just terrible. Number two. The second thing that I hate about my Forester XT, and this goes back to my other video that I mentioned there was kind of a caveat, is mod support. In my last video, I love that there was so much stuff that you could do with this car. There's also things that I hate. So mod support for the Forester XT is kind of limited when it comes to specialized things for the Forester. Now I'm talking about things like um, the exhaust or things like um, if you have an access port. They do a lot of stuff with WRX and STIs and obvious the sports cars. And this one is the last or completely neglected in terms of mod support. The Forester XT is kind of the uh, kind of the outcast, let's just say that. So there's a lot of things that um, are hard to come by. The hood scoop, for example, the ones that actually fit this that are larger for the STIs, people just don't make those because not a lot of people have the Forester XT or people want to make the parts for them because everyone's making the parts for the WRX and the STI for these years instead of the XTs. It's a pain, but we make do. Number three is something you should be very familiar with, especially if you have an access port or have done any sort of modifications to your car. The number three thing that I hate the most is the green test plug. That's right, down here, up under the footwell of the driver's side, there's a green test plug. Every time that you do something with the ECU or the access port, you have to reach down in there, crawl under, find it, plug it in, do your thing, and then once you're done, you have to crawl back under there, unplug it, and then you're good to go. It would be so much better if that wasn't a thing. If I could just pull over, do my thing on the access port, unplug it, and I'm good to go. That'd be so much easier, but there's an extra step on that plug, which usually wouldn't be that bad, but it is just buried in the deep depths of heat. Possible modification is um, cutting two ends of those wires and making it a switch. So if you do it a lot, you could just have a switch when you do it. I'm eventually probably gonna do that because it's quite annoying. And number four, something that anyone with a Subaru knows, the pain and agony is changing your spark plugs. Any Forester, because of its boxer engine, the two plugs on either side are just buried in there. And even if you get the stuff out of the way, getting down here to actually change the plugs is, is like pulling teeth. It is a pain in the butt. And birds want to be part of my video. Isn't that right, Mr. Pickles? Go ahead, keep singing. I know where you live. Number five, something that is well known in the Subaru community, is the paint. How thin it is for these model years. Now there's a lot of places on here that most people can see are very thin paint. If you have a car that stays outside, these older Subarus, the paint will fade very quickly. It also chips very quickly if anything hits it. It's really hard to keep these, these model year Subarus in nice condition because the paint is so thin. And then you see 
all the times people hit your car because they're dicks. So number six for the things that I hate is the sunglasses holder. Now I'm pretty positive that's what these are, sunglass holders. They're supposed to um, put your sunglasses, everyone I know puts their sunglasses up in this little cubby area. But the thing is, my sunglasses have never fit up there. I have to keep them in the, the middle console area and even in the big one. I have put my sunglasses in here no matter what way I put them in. I can't because I'll snap them if I push too hard. You can even see on my sunglasses here. I tried to put them in there and it snapped the bottom of them. It's just too small. They don't fit. Sunglasses don't fit in the sunglasses holder thing, so I have to put it right here. That's fine, it's okay, I'm not mad. Number seven. This is probably something that no one else has said. This is probably just me and maybe a small amount of other people. But if you look down here, you've got heated seats. Again, that's it. Now, if you look on the STI, they have something that's super cool and super helpful is the center diff control. This one obviously doesn't have it. The STI has a little wheel. The, the newer models, you can do it in the dash. That's really good for track and stuff, but also is really good for off-roading. Having that and be able to lock or get very close to locking your diff if you're going off-road, which is more common in a Subaru Forester than an STI, then you're a happy camper, but this one doesn't have it. Now, there is a modification you can do. You can go up in here and you screw around with that and you can basically uh, manually lock the center diff, which is something I'm going to do in the future when I have the money. It's actually not that expensive. It's just uh, I don't have any money right now. But doing that, it's a little switch. It'll lock it up and it makes off-roading, there's a bunch of people that do it. It makes off-roading anything that you're doing outdoors in the snow or the mud, especially people that do uh, like rock crawling with these, makes it a thousand times better because you can lock that up and you just get that instant 50-50 split between the front and the rear for the wheels. Awesome. Number eight has to do with this pillar right up here and also the mirrors. That is the wind noise. Now, this was actually, I believe, a recall on Subaru's end. They recalled, at least I know, the Forester for wind noise. Now, you do have these big, flappy, giant mirrors that creates wind, but there's another wind noise that comes right through here. The wind comes in through here and it makes a terrible noise and whistling, and there cure for that, you can actually see this one's already been done, is a, uh, I guess a little piece of foam. They put that in between there, I guess to keep it from that flapping or whistling or whatever it does, but it doesn't matter because you're still driving down the road and you can hear the wind and it is annoying to drive at high speeds on the freeway and have that noise just constantly there. Just crank up your radio. Number nine is not really something I can show you guys, but if you have a Forester or another Subaru, you might be um, knowledgeable to this, is there's lifetime filters on these Subarus. So the transmission, I mean, depending on which transmission you have, I have the automatic and they said it is a lifetime filter, lifetime transmission fluid filter, blah, 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 blah. There's no such thing as lifetime. That's crap. That's something I really need to do because this is starting to shift uh, kind of leggy. And maybe they didn't expect this car to last as long as it does, but lifetime transmission filters and fluid, that, that's just terrible. That's one of the main components in your car. You have to make sure it stays fresh and clean and beautiful. And another one in the back, something I've recently done, 
in the stock Subaru Forester, most of them, in the back, there's a fuel filter, which again, is supposed to be a lifetime fuel filter. I have relocated mine in the front, right up here, where it's supposed to be, and it actually is this in the very early models of the Forester before they switched it to the in-tank. I put it up here because fuel filters need to be changed out regularly, not as regularly as like spark plugs, but it does need to be changed out and having it as a lifetime thing is just gonna make your car run like crap the older it gets. And number 10 for the things that I hate about my Forester XT is right here under the hood and is the whole reason why I installed this guy. Yeah, an oil air separator or an oil catch can, whatever you use, is a must-have for these Subaru engines because they're notorious for their blow-by. Basically, the oil bypasses where it's regularly supposed to go, gets into your intake, gums things up, and it's real bad for your engine. That's why a lot of people put in the uh, catch can or separator is to catch all that blow-by oil, which is nasty. And also another oil subject, I haven't really had much of this problem, but a lot of people complain about it, is burning oil. These Subarus are known for burning a lot of oil and constantly having to keep oil in your car, filling it up to make sure you're at a proper level. So that's another thing that people hate and something that I hate. Once again, thank you guys for coming by and watching a video, even though it is a quite rainy day. I wanted to film today. Yeah, thanks for stopping by.